Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are going to do some brown hair real quick using the Art and Fly oil-based um, colored pencils. If you're unfamiliar with the Art and Fly, these are a budget-friendly oil-based pencil. Um, they come in a 72 count, and then they also have a 24 count portrait set. Uh, but the portrait set actually pulls from the 72 count set. So don't think you're getting extra colors if you buy the other one. <laughs> um, so I thought it would be fun to do some brown hair. I had used the portrait set to color her skin here. And that was just the colors that come in the portrait set. I wanted to see, you know, how it did for skin. And it actually wasn't too bad. And then I started pulling colors from the 72 count set to do the rest of the picture. And for the brown hair, some of these are in the portrait set, but some are not. So, you know, it's better to just, in that case, get the 72 count set. <laughs> but this will just be a quick little tutorial. I'm not going to do like all of this hair here. But as you can see, these do pretty well for hair. Um, the only thing you'll notice is we're going to use less layers and that's because this is a really heavy gray scale. So if you have trouble with your hands and you want more realistic hair, you know, with the, the strands actually showing, a thicker gray scale like this will require less work to cover it up. All right. So first thing we're going to do is start with our lightest color, which is sandstone number 63. I'm just going to color this portion in here and show you guys how to do this combo. So we're just putting down a light layer of sandstone. If you have trouble doing light pressure, then hold your pencil like I do way back. Even after almost six years of coloring, I cannot control my heavy handedness. So I always hold it back like this to prevent myself from doing what feels natural. And that means smushing colors onto a page. The world is Prismacolor to me. I just smash. Okay. Now we are going to go to our darkest color, which is Cedar number 67. And as usual, we're going to just kind of flick that in to where the darkest areas of the grayscale are for us. Let's see, pretty much where it's super black lines. And add a few up here where the leaf is kind of hanging over her head or her hair, I should say. And then I am going to color in as it curves here. Okay. So add a few more. This is going to be super fast because this dark gray scale does a lot of the work for us. <clears throat> okay. Come in here. You still want to flick out using the same pressure I've taught you guys in most of the hair tutorials. This is just going to require less flicking easier on the wrist, sort of. I mean, if your wrists are delicate and you can't handle any flicking motion, this will still not work. <laughs> um, okay, now you want to grab chocolate, number 68. And as you can see here, where the grayscale breaks up, the highlight is mostly contained here, so that's where we're dragging our colors to. Okay, so just keep pulling it like that. I am overlapping uh, the cedar color a little as I pull out. I'm not using a very heavy pressure here. Um, I'd say medium-ish because like I said, it's not going to take as much work to cover up the dark gray scale here. Okay. Now you'll want to grab a brush because these get kind of dusty. Um, pecan, pecan, however you want to say it, 66. Same thing, just going to add that over top of everything, but drag it out. Just kind of pull more 
outward. Okay. Now you want to grab Tawny. I think that's how you say it, number 65. Fill in any gaps up top where you see it. <clears throat> and this one, we're more going like midway through our strokes and bringing it into the highlight as opposed to overlapping everything. And as always, remember to keep turning that pencil because that's what keeps your point sharp so that you're not resharpening. I mean, these are inexpensive to replace, but <laughs> let's not replace them prematurely. They do get dusty, though, even with this pressure. And this is a smooth cardstock. Okay. Now you want your sandstone again, number 63. And I'm just coloring in the highlight, bringing it up a little. Okay, now we're just gonna add some depth because it's looking not as dark over here. So grab chocolate. This is not our darkest color. It's next to the darkest color. And I'm just gonna add a couple strokes in here. For a budget oil-based pencil, these do layer on top of one another really nice. Um, they are definitely harder than like the Square Brute Fooners, which are also a budget oil-based pencil. Um, I'm trying to think what else I could compare them to. <laughs> I'll think on that. Uh, okay, then grab your pecan, pecan, however you want to say it. It's kind of like tomato, tomato. I say pecan, but... I don't judge. Okay. Just want to close off that highlight a little bit. Really hope you can't hear the kids yelling in my backyard. <laughs> Sorry if you do. Um, sandstone number 63. Tell them to go play outside and they just go out there and scream. All right. Just coloring that in again. A nice, kind of like a yellow ochre, I guess is the best way to put that one. All right. And I am just going to grab a Tawny, number 65, once more. I know you're like, she said short, and this is already almost 10 minutes. <laughs> I promise we're almost done. You got to work hair, though. You can't just throw it down and be like, okay, done. Well, you can, but I can't. <laughs> All right. And there we have it. So it is a simple five-color blend using the Art & Fly oil-based pencils. As you can see, I've been using that same blend over here to create this effect. And it looks really good, um, especially for a budget pencil. So this is an easier one than most of the ones that I've been doing. So hopefully that helps you guys. I do plan to do some more in the future that will require less layers. I've had some requests for that, so I will definitely put that on the list. But yeah, hopefully this helps you use your art and flies for brown hair. And until next time, guys, take care.